Hello, and welcome to our Bite Size PD um, for today on our Constitution Fitness Award Challenge, uh, which is new this year for students K-5 in Canyons District. I will be providing you with an overview of what the challenge is and providing you with some resources and suggestions for participating with your students. My name is Hallie Kirk and I work in ISD as our gifted and talented specialist. So I help coordinate the SALTA program. And then I'm also our K-5 social studies specialist. So before we get into the challenge itself, um, just a little bit of context. In December of 2022, the state passed our new uh, social study standards for elementary schools. And we are now moving into implementation of those standards in this school year. While we are looking for a um, specific or official curriculum that we um, would recommend to be using to help facilitate um, the implementation of these standards, the Constitution Fitness Awards Challenge uh, emerged from the state as an opportunity to provide um, teachers with some guides, some ideas for how to support the new standards and um, helps help um, our recognition of Founders Day and Constitution Month. So this is an optional program and it was developed by USBE. For um, what this program is designed to do is be customized for your specific needs as a school, as an uh, individual teacher, as a community. Um, it really, we recognize it's gonna look different in different schools and even different classrooms through in the school. So you can do this um, on your own as a teacher um, and just do it with your class. You can do it as a grade level team and kind of come up with ways that you want to engage in these different activities, or you can do it school wide. If you click right here on this image, you will um, be, you'll, you'll, it'll open up a file that is an overview of the whole um, award. Really what the award is, is that each grade level has a series of activities that they complete, and then once they complete those activities, they um, win a the award, the Constitution Fitness Award. What the award is, is it's a certificate, and then you'll get a pin that's gonna be different for each grade level um, for completing all of the different activities. It is, as I said, it is optional. Um, we are hoping that as um, more and more students are participating, that then each year they can earn different pins. And then by the time they get to their fifth grade year, their last year in elementary, they'll get a little bit something extra like a lanyard or a pennant where they can keep all of their pins that they worked hard for each year. This does not have to be done just in September. So we have some schools that are doing um, the challenge just for September and then they're moving on. We have some that are gonna be giving students the whole year to um, complete those activities. So it's really up to how you would like to uh, tailor it for your school's needs. So to get started with participating, the first thing that you're gonna want to do is, move myself over here, um, you're going to want to, at the document from the previous slide, and it's also linked here, uh, look through your specific grade level re requirements and see where they might already fit with what you're doing um, in your regular school year. So maybe you do some kind of like a, you know, traditional wax museum um, activity at the end of the year. And some of those requirements could work really nicely with what you're already doing. Or maybe you have a um, activity that you do for Memorial Day with your school. Is that a good place to fit in some of these activities? So I'd start by seeing, you know, where does it naturally fit with what you're already doing? Also, if you, if you wanna just do hit this um, Constitution Fitness Challenge in the month of September alone, then it's really a great place to work with what your school's already doing for Constitution Day. Um, I would also suggest working with your grade level teams during a PLC to do this because uh, you know more minds are always better. And it's also, you'll notice in this document, there are a lot of different um, suggestions or ideas for content integration. So this could be a great opportunity to pull in some of your boosters teachers. And you know, are, is there an art component that they could maybe do during a booster? And then they would get that activity um, completed. So kind of look through what you're already doing familiarize yourself with those requirements. Uh, another example, Constitution Day is the, is the 17th. Um, for fourth grade, one of their activities to complete for the challenge 
is to compare the Article I, Section 1 of the Utah Constitution to the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution and create a representation of their similarities and differences. So you can see how really broad this is. Um, a representation could be any modality. So it doesn't have to be necessarily an essay or a, um, you know, a full-fledged art project. It's just, it's really however they want to represent how these two documents are the same and how they're different. Um, if you click on this box, it will also, I've pulled out all of the different um, activities that are required for each grade level that would fit nicely with what Constitution Day and uh, Founders Month in September already is being done um, in most of our schools. So feel free to use that. Uh, you would also want to look through the standards alignments and the content integrations and then the supporting resources. So you just kind of First step is to kind of look through what, what's required for your grade level, where might it fit, um, and then here's an example. So for kindergarten, there are some compelling questions that go along with each of the grade levels, and then it will share, it'll have your standard, your specific social studies standard, and then what the requirements are um, that align with that standard for the Constitution Fitness Challenge. So these, and it, you'll also see some other um, standards here as well, like an ELA standard. Um, some of them are arts, music, uh, you know, I think there's even some math and science in there as well. You can also do this um, challenge all at school. You can decide you're going to have your students complete it at school during the regular school day. You could do it as a send home project and you want your, um, you know, tell students' families and ask them to help their student participate in this challenge as an option. So you'll see that for each of the requirements, there's a, there's a contextualization for how you would do it at school or how you would do it at home. You can do a hybrid of those two options. So again, it's just really flexible. It's designed to fit what works best for you and your students. So once you've looked over your grade level requirements, the next thing you're gonna want to do is determine how you're gonna track the completion of these activities. So I'd suggest setting a deadline, um, April at the latest, just so that we can get you the pins when your students have, um, you know, when they've completed the challenge, the students who have received the award, we can get you those pins before the last month of school and all of the craziness at the end of the year. So I, um, I'd suggest picking when you wanna start, when you wanna stop, and then think about, are you gonna have them do it at home first and then check it off with teachers? Are you gonna have them tell the teacher when they're ready to check off the activity? So kind of a go as, go as you're ready, not like everyone's gonna do activity this activity this week. Um, are you as a teacher gonna be tracking the students as they complete these activities? And then USB does have some checklists to kind of help with this, but I would recommend going beyond that simple checklist and really tailoring it for you, for your classroom, for your school, for your grade level, and customizing it and then using a, ch a checklist that you've created. At the end of the day, you're the one who is going to be, um, you know, deciding whether or not your student has mastered that at that activity. They've demonstrated that they, um, you know, have, have earned that particular requirement. So if you, you want to customize it a little bit more, say, for example, our gifted and talented classes, you know, they might want to go a step beyond what the um, grade level requirement is, or maybe if you're going to just send it home to do, you want to make it a little bit more simplified so that they can complete it on their own with less guidance. So however you want to tailor it, I would suggest using a tracker, um, decide when and when and, and when you're going to begin, when you're going to end and have the tracker. Next step, um, you're going to want to inform your students, caregivers, families about this challenge. So this could be a letter home, this could be a P-square, a newsletter, a school website, just filling them in on what the challenge is, why you're doing it, and what their uh, requirements are to earn the award. I have some examples here, um, some draft letters for how you might want to um, share with families, so feel free to use those or adapt them as you see fit. And then your fourth step is the most fun. You're going to introduce it to your students. So kind of kicking off, here's our challenge. Here's what we're going to be doing. Um, I would do something really fun to do that. So we do have our uh, Founders Month video that we're required, every classroom is required to share um, during Constitution Month anyway. So that's a good place to start if you just want to share that video with your class and then introduce them to the challenge. That's great. Um, but some more kind of outside of the box ideas. You might, we had a, a teacher in another district that dressed up as George Washington to introduce the challenge to the class. Or you could invite somebody from your, um, you know, your city council or community leader to come to speak to your class about it. 
you could, the National Archives has some really excellent student webinars that your class could participate in, and they have some um, really great teacher resources that go alongside it. You could do a read aloud like We the Kids. Um, you could have a student council member maybe in the upper grades or a class president introduce it. You could have students uh, chat with a historical figure using Magic School. So there's a great tool on there um, where they are able to have a conversation with George Washington. Um, so you could, if you click on any of these links, it'll take you to that resource. There's a, a game for our lower grades, K through two, about um, what is community good and why is it important? So kind of those introductory steps into civics. Um, from iCivics and it's completely free. You could have your students play the game and then kind of talk about what the challenge is going to be. There is a virtual tour of Mount Vernon. So there, you know, leverage some of your cool technology tools, um, work together and come up with maybe the way that you want to get your kids excited about participating in this challenge. Then kids are just working to check off the activities as they're completed. So however you've decided to track it, whenever it's going to be due, they're completing these different activities. And then once they've done the six of the required activities, um, by your predetermined deadline, you're gonna go to our website to order pins for your students. Um, please do it by April at the latest, as I said, just so we can get you the pins for your students by the end of the school year. And then the certificates are available on our website if you click this link, and you'll just print that out double-sided, and then you can decide how you wanna present students with their awards. So this might be an end-of-year assembly, this could be something you just do in your class, however you wanna um, recognize them for their completion of this challenge. So here are some resources that can also hopefully be helpful um, for you as you're working through figuring out how you wanna participate in this with your students. Our um, district website for social studies is here, and that's where you'll order the pins. It's got all of these other resources linked as well. The Constitution Fitness Challenge Overview, that's the document from our first uh, slide, our first step, which goes through the different standards alignments, how your um, how that might meets that social studies standard requirement, and then the resources that the state has already um, pulled together to help support that particular um, requirement, that activity. And then the certificates that I mentioned are also linked right here. You can click on your grade level, the tracker um, checklist from uh, the state. I also created a teacher planning checklist, which I'll share on the next slide, um, just to kind of synthesize all of the information I've shared today so that you can kind of go through and check it off. Um, and then some other resources uh, from our district and our state as well for just supporting Founders Month and Constitution Day. So here's the checklist that I mentioned. And it just really summarizes what I have already told you today. So your first step of looking through requirements, kind of figuring out how you're going to um, work it into your school year, then how you're going to track it when you're going to finish it, um, how you're going to be monitoring whether or not they finish these activities, and then how to communicate with families, how to um, introduce it to your students, and then your... Um, you know, having students work work as they check them off, and then your um, last step of just ordering the pins, printing your certificates, and um, awarding them to your students. So if you have any uh, questions or you'd like some more suggestions or how you can engage in this activity with your students, please feel free to email me at halliekirk.canyonsdistrict.org. Um, and I would be happy to, or you're also free to talk to your coach about it, and I'd be happy to help you in, um, in trying out our Constitution Fitness Challenge. So thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.